Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Book It Vince, the Wrestling Dream Match Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Martin Bennett. And with me, as always, is the redneck messiah, Anthony Hall. Oh, man. The redneck messiah? Oh, geez. <laughs> is it just another Stone Cold Steve Austin one? No, no, it's not. No? Oh. This is a guy who was featured a lot in the mid 2000s and he's still with the company um and sometimes you see him on tv sometimes uh he's he is more involved backstage though oh god is it like road dog (laughs) no i don't know i don't know it's jamie noble oh of j and j security well, yes, but before that, he was uh, Jamie Noble, the wrestler, teaming up with everyone's favorite. Everyone's favorite. I can't. I don't even. <laughs> Do you remember Jimmy Wang? Yeah, I, of yeah. course I remember Jimmy Wang. The two of them That's teamed a- up as like this, like the cowboy crew and. <laughs> That's a future Book It Vince episode. I just have to find a, a person to pair with the Jimmy Wang Yang. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was Jimmy Wang Yang. Right. Yeah. You know, oh, I, uh, Lord. So funny. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, Jamie Noble was cruiserweight, like big cruiserweight um, contender for a while in the mid 2000s. And then now he's a backstage producer and he has been for like, I don't, like 10 plus years now. And yeah, he was a part of J and J security with Seth Rollins. And now he just will randomly appear on TV if they need to pull people apart. Him and other backstage people will just run out and hold people apart. So, yeah, it's beautiful. Sometimes Jamie Noble. Yeah, sometimes a career just moves into a different direction than you thought hey, it would. But I'm sure hey. he's very happy. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Yeah, he probably has a cool job within the company that is not just, you know, kayfabe security member. (laughs) Um, But but that's cool. But yes, we have another great episode for you today. Um, Last time you were not here and we had a good friend, Jake Martin, on the show to do a to do a AEW draft Um, I hope people enjoyed that started a new tradition on that episode that we're going to continue going forward, which is doing shouts outs. Oh, yeah. Shouts outs. Excellent. Last last week, we uh, shouted out Brussels for to all our listeners in Brussels. I'm using I'm using our analytics demographics thing for to, to determine <laughs> what what place we're going to be shout shouting out each week this week shouts out to you seattle oh yeah all right shouts out to seattle if you're a listener from seattle shouts out to you thank you for supporting the pod and living in a very cool city home of the uh, pike place market that's right. Where they throw fish around. Oh, and okay. That's the one. I see. Famously, uh, I think where the first Starbucks was. Yes. Uh, and Nirvana. Starbucks. Yes. The, the home gr- of grunge. The home of grunge. Uh, <laughs> we're going to jump into the episode. But of course, if you enjoy what we do here at Book Events, please consider subscribing or following the podcast on whatever platform you get your podcasts on or come watch the video version um, and uh, follow us on Twitter at Book Events Pod for a grand old time. We are almost at 50. We're almost at 50 episodes, which is nuts. We've been doing this for over a year. Crazy. But it never gets boring. That's right. That is right. 
especially with today's dream match feud that Anthony is bringing to us. He has not told me what it is. He keeps hinting at it and that it's either going to be really good or really bad. (laughs) That's right. And I am uh, right now getting an image for all of our video listeners so that they can see one of the members of this uh, historic booking that we are about to do on Book It Vince. Shouts uh, out someone. to the shouts out to the video listeners because they yeah they they're shouts they're in out. the minor, they're in the minority to the uh, audio watchers. So. That's right. Shout right. out to you. Here we go. This oh? is one of the men involved in this week's Book at Vince Fantasy Booking. The dreamy, sensational, incredibly sexy Peter Avalon. Pretty Peter Avalon, they say. Pretty and, Peter Avalon. Love him. Uh, of course, by proxy. His uh, his boys, um, the wingmen. I don't even know if they're really doing very much right now, but but regardless, they are going to be involved some way, somehow in this feud, of course. But he will be feuding with none other than recent AEW uh, official acquisition and heartthrob of the Internet. Fuego del Sol. Oh, interesting. OK, so. Pretty P. Ravalon versus Fuego del Sol. The, That's right. So what is, where yeah. is he from again? What do they always say? He is the best luchador from uh, not Milwaukee. From, from, Tennessee? Uh, no. From it's like a o- Cincinnati, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Yes. That's what it is. I'm bad with American geography. I don't know where anything is. Oklahoma City's finest. Lucha Libre. Mm-hmm. Um, Master of the Fuego DDT. The Tornado DDT. Tornado, tornado DDT. Sorry, yes. I need to lower my light because of, I'm fading into uh, the body. You are, the you are like one. morphing into the heart shaped uh, <laughs> uh, uh, couch there. But, yeah. All right, cool. So, yes. Yeah, so, this definitely is this. Are we going to try to make this prime time dynamite material or is this going to be like the best feud we've ever seen on dark and elevation? (laughs) Okay, so uh, so yes and no. So this is like I'm not obviously going to try to book um, like main card feud between pretty Peter (laughs) Avalon and Fuego del Sol. But I am going to try to book a very interesting, uh, of course, with your help as well. A very interesting and no, uh, you do all the silly, <laughs> silly mid card feud, uh, hey. or uh, one that can spam uh, AW Dark and maybe uh, have a, a culmination at a rampage or uh, a pay per view. Probably not pay per view. I imagine this actually happening on a few episodes of Dynamite. Um, they wrestle a couple times on Dark or Elevation, uh, and then we get like the finale of this on. Uh, a rampage night. So I was, it's a very I was just about to say, one. I actually find it really like I know they do this also on in WWE, kind of with like main event and two hundred five live, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but I do enjoy that they put a lot more effort into like uh, having specific feuds happen on elevation and not dark like i actually really enjoy that like you know you have the classic peter avalon versus brandon color mm-hmm. the, the 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 feud that would never end the never end um, very similar to um martin's if you follow us on uh unknown era films uh, on our twitch channel uh, we've been playing uh, raw versus smackdown gm mode and famously the Shelton Benjamin and Edge feud that Martin has been booking every time we stream is the never ending delight that has now recently gone sour. Yes. Now, now they're going to have to, we're going to have to figure out uh, uh, new things for them. Um, if you want to catch those uh, uh, past streams, you can do so by going to our other YouTube channel, Unknown Era Gaming. 
catch the VODs there. Quick plug. Uh, <laughs> quickest. Quickest but, plug. Uh, you know, there's also another feud that comes to my mind is the uh, Big Swole versus Diamante feud. Um, right. That ended in uh, a really cool match, actually, where it was... Um, I forget what the match type was called, but it was it was a best of three, but it wasn't two out of three falls. It was that you have to get you have to get two out of three wins and you can get a pin, a submit, or a knockout. But once someone gets one of them, then you can't get that type of win anymore. So oh, that's cool. So I think it was called a three strike match. Where it was like, as soon as that's someone that, that gets cool, yeah, as soon as someone gets pinned, then you can't pin to get a win anymore. You have to do a submission or a knockout. And mm. so, and it was a great match because again, the people that were at wrestle on dark and elevation are are extremely talented. So yeah, Peter okay, pre- Marty. Peter Avalon with the yeah. wingmen versus Fuego. Interesting. Yeah, where where okay. is where do you see it starting? Okay, so here is the caveat for this. Uh, to make it fun, uh, before we started recording, I was looking on my phone um, to figure out what shows, like, re- like real television shows, uh, are on the networks that AEW lives on. So that's TNT and TBS. So I think as something fun, uh, we get... Uh, a tease of this feud on roads to the top and Cody is talking to maybe the TNT executives about doing a potential crossover of uh, having an AEW wrestler appear on one of the network comedies or something like that. Oh, okay. I like so this. now <laughs> I uh, see where you're going. I like this a lot. <laughs> so Cody's like, I think I have the perfect guys for this and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to like cut a promo on dynamite and we're going to have possibly like a battle Royal for uh, this spot. So it's called like, it will be like a a W dynamite, a TNT guest star battle Royal. (laughs) And and you get like, this is the opportunity for us to feature a bunch of our favorite guys. uh, I do have a question. I, cause you were looking. So yeah. Um, is there like, do, are there any game shows on TNT or TBS? There's so many. Okay. There's too many. What's what's one that like? So okay, this is because this is what I think. It's like I like the idea for the battle royal. I think to help start the feud, what happens is like, um, what if it's like Cody wants to just give it to Fuego? Like he's just like, can we get Fuego? on like one of the game shows because i think it would be a good for him and it it would yes like everybody loves swaggo and Mm -hmm. uh that way we could like do some cross promotion and then p and then peter like hears about it and gets angry and like and and is just like well why him why fuego like yeah (laughs) and start start up some drama that way and then that can lead to like uh them maybe like going to like Peter like goes to I don't know goes to someone like QT or whatever and like complains and is like well why don't we make it like a battle royale or like why don't we make it like a match or something and then and <laughs> just like it, like uh, uh, planting the seed of planting the seed of Peter and Fuego like having this feud yeah yeah that's that's a good idea um what is a what is a game show that they put these put these men on? Um, okay, doesn't matter the specifics, but let's say there, yeah, there's a a game show that 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 they're like, oh, okay, great, like let's let's get Fuego on there. Like everybody loves him, you know, he's got the mask. Like I think the kids will really like him and probably tune into AEW. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and maybe maybe we see that clip. Um, on an AEW uh, dynamite, and then <laughs> there's a backstage segment with the wingmen where they're like watching the TV, and all of the other wingmen are like hyping Peter up. They're like, "Oh, come on! It should be you, man. You're hilarious. Yeah, you're sexy. You're a heartthrob. They're picking the wrong guy. You should talk well, to Cody." 
because if you if you remember um uh peter was on uh the same episode of uh jet or not jeopardy sorry family feud as yes. as uh, rj city and david arquette and and those guys jungle boy yeah. Jun- oh yeah, Jungle Boy too. Yeah. And yeah. Now, oh, now I feel bad not mentioning the Dalton Castle. That's who it was. Yes, yeah, of course. Dalton Castle. Very cool guy. Uh, um and yes. so like and so they're like you were on you were on Family Feud. Like they should be getting you yeah, to be you on there. Family Feud. Yeah. You, should- it's like yeah, you won Family Feud with David Arquette. David Arquette could have done it without you. Um <laughs> <laughs> David and Arquette then, couldn't have done yeah. it without you, <laughs> which is not true. Technically David Arquette couldn't have won Celebrity Family Feud without RJ City, but that's for another day. <laughs> um so yeah, the way oh, there's match game. Up and- oh, pyramid. Oh, are any oh. of these are any of these still re- basic? Okay, so here's my immediate thought: is like there has to be a moment where, like, okay, yeah. So there's the battle royale. I think f- we can talk more about that, but I think like Fuego actually does win. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, actually, okay. Here's what I wanted to do. They. Both win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but how? Because we because we love that stupid shit where it's like they both eliminate each other at the exact same time. And so both their feet yes. touch the floor. And then Peter argues yes. that they should both be on the show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got it, Marty. You, we've watched a lot of uh, good feuds and bad feuds over our years of being uh, smarks. <laughs> And wrestling fans. Uh, so exactly. Does, then, so does it's, Tony Khan then run out to the ring and then blow both his quads trying to get into the ring? Um, <laughs> Vince McMahon and the 2006 Royal Rumble? Um, No, obviously that would be <laughs> hilarious for us uh, in the fictional universe of book at Vince. If Tony Khan runs out, blows both his quads and is like, ah, restart the match. But no, 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 no. I think it happens. It happens. And then they're arguing in the ring. Um, here, pretty Peter Avalon is like, you don't deserve this way. Go. Uh, you're only popular on the internet. I've been on real network TV. I'm more handsome than you. We've never even seen your face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how can you be the face of how can you be the face of TBS when n- you don't even show your face? <laughs> exactly. It's not. Come on. And that's where J.D. Drake can be like, yeah, it's not. Oh, my God. I was just about to do a horrible Southern accent. <laughs> hey, but we do a lot of horrible accents on this show. We might, he's you like, might as well lean into it. Like, yeah, it's not called. What the fuck accent am I trying? OK, no, he's like, it's not called the mask of TBS. <laughs> Yeah, it's not called the mask of TBS. It's definitely not his invert his accent. Yeah. That, there we go. Okay. It's a different regional uh, American accent. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not you're not going to be the face of TBS if you are hiding under a mask. Uh, and I think, OK, so let's talk about Battle Royal. It's the uh, TBS guest star Battle Royal. I think it features I think the, all of the wingmen are going to be in it, I think, already, just so that they can be around. Uh, then you got all of your favorites. We've got. Um, uh, I'm pointing at my all of head your right now. all of your dark and elevation favorites. Uh, uh, I've thought Serpentico. Uh, uh, oh, Luther. Luther, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Serpentico, Luther, Lee Moriarty. Yeah. Um, uh, Joey Janela. Joey Janela. Sunny Kiss. Sunny Kiss. Uh, I'll, it's just all the all you the have some of the who you are could, mainstay. You could have some of the Dark Order members. Yeah, we got uh, Alan Angles. Angels. Uh, we got Alan uh, Angles. Uh, Alan Angles. Alan, Alan Angles. <laughs> Alan Angles. Uh, we've got yeah, we've got all the numbers uh, of the Dark Order. Um, Stu and. Uh, Uno and Reynolds and Silver are too famous for this uh, TBS guest star battle royal. Mm. Sorry, boys. 
Um, but yeah, you have like, you have like all the people that like are normally featured on like dark and elevation and stuff or Wheeler, Utah could be in it as well. Mm-hmm. Why not yeah. throw them in yeah. there? All those, um, mid, all the mid card people. No, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically to like, to give them like something to do on dynamite as well. Cause like, you know, all these guys probably wrestle one way or another on, uh, dark, but this is like the big chance for them to get like some spots in on dynamite. So this is the TBS guest star tournament. Yeah, um, or TBS guest star battle royal, and yeah, people get eliminated. Boom, 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 boom. We get some fun spots. Uh, we get to see some uh, uh, athleticism, uh, some of the finishers that are cool. But at the end of it all, it's Fuego del Sol, and should it pretty Peter have one? I got a quick question. Should yes. it be just they win a like guest spot on like a game show? Or should it be that they are featured for an entire week on the network where they're like <laughs> in like they're like, like this has got like, like obviously a lot of this, uh, you'd have to plan way far in advance. What if they're all like on a game show and then on a talk show and then in like a drama, like series and like, <laughs> why not? And every single night, this is not yeah. possible. Technically, this is not super possible, but um, <laughs> I think it's like but then they win a get. I think they should like win a guest. Yeah, like the the main prize is yeah that they're featured on television um, across the board in a couple of different <laughs> ways. Yeah, like we could do. Uh, <laughs> and it's oh like for an entire week, we're <laughs> just in random shows. Like they're on like a Bake Off or something. I don't know. I don't know what shows are on TBS, but. Uh, okay, that'd just be so funny. I, I, I think they they should get um a couple of appearances, but maybe a week is a bit aggressive for somebody who relatively no, be- nobody knows outside of wrestling. No, because I <laughs> because because with what I'm thinking of, like how then that week goes, I think it'd be perfect. Okay, so okay, let's roll with it then. Why not? Um, let's say that they get, like get, yeah, it's a TBS guest star battle royal so they'll be interviewed uh, there will be an entire episode of roads to the top uh following them for the in- for the week okay uh, po- like post post them winning the battle royal i think is like uh is like theoretically they get uh, uh like an entire episode of roads to the top dedicated to following them around seeing their you know, uh, rituals and how they get ready for um, a show, like learning about them, you know, something like that. So that's like one of the appearances. Yeah, sure. They get interviewed by Conan is obviously ending, but like Conan was on TBS for a while. So, yeah, that would be Conan funny. interviews them um, and then they get onto like a dumb sitcom as like a, uh, a character for one episode. Uh, and then there's like a drama or something that they uh, appear on briefly. So, so um, here is essentially like what I have in my mind. And let me know if this is sort of the direction that you were thinking of. <laughs> the reason why I want it to be this long thing is because I just want this long running joke of. So our plan is that both Fuego and Peter win. And it's a double elimination both their feet hit the floor they argue and the decision is made that they have both technically won yes so here's what i think then happens is through this week they are then on the shows together but just like okay do you remember at all in like the early, like the late nineties, early two thousands, when there were all these like, like teen sitcom shows like boy meets world, Sabrina, the teenage, witch, um, what else was another, uh, 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 uh brotherly love with the, with the, um, uh, Lawrence brothers. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Teen angel. All those shows had like, and a week of episodes and then they did it again like i mean they they've done it with like superhero shows and stuff but like all those shows had a week where all the ep like like people from episodes like crossed over where like sabrina came into the boy meets world uh world 
<laughs> uh, and so and uh, basically what I'm thinking is like the Fuego and Peter are on all these shows, but like they they keep like they're trying to pre- be proper and on these shows, but then it just ends with them fighting. And so, and so like <laughs> and so like them being interviewed like on Conan or something is like it's a Conan's like. I like to bring up my first. I like to bring up my first guest. He's a wrestler with All Elite Wrestling. Uh, he's one of the hottest rising stars in uh, in the company. Fuego del Sol, and Fuego just comes out and they talk for like a minute, and then Peter comes out. He's like, he's like, Conan, when were you going to introduce me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Conan, when's my time? Yeah, we're that's supposed good. to be. OK, we're, we're, it's like we're supposed to have equal time on this and then they just end up fighting and then or like or he sits down and they interview and they kind of have a promo or whatever. And then him and Fuego end up fighting and they go backstage and Conan's like, well, I guess we're going to go to commercial <laughs> or something like that. And then like, yeah, on like the game okay, show. So I, I like that. And then on the game show, it's like they're competing against each other, but then they end up like getting angry at each other and they end up fighting. And then <laughs> yeah, and then okay. on the so sitcom, that, that's a good way to initiate the that's a good way to initiate the feud. I think that you could do like a bunch of like real life, like live stuff. Yeah. Um, like with the on talk the sitcom, show, the game show <laughs> on the sitcom, though, they are they are acting as like other characters. And maybe it's like one of them's like a janitor or like works at a, a, a like a fast food place or something like that or a bar and like they're prote- they're actually acting as like yeah sure i'll get you that right away or or like sorry we don't have any of those in and then like <laughs> peter comes <laughs> peter comes in <laughs> or fuego comes in and then they then they're tr- they're doing the same role but they're trying to do it better than each other. And then they end up fighting. And then all the characters are like, what just happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good way to do that. But then I think we have to get back into the wrestling world now. So oh, they, no, yeah. this is just this is just to help build the feud. Also, the whole thing that you yeah, talked so about. They've done, they've done that. They've done that, right? But really we quickly. To, we're saving one. We're saving one like big thing for them to do right oh, yeah. like but the t you know the, the guest you, star thing is like but you know the you know the how you said like oh yeah for the four roads to the top they have a whole episode dedicated to them right i think yeah. then instead of it being an episode where like it's cutting back and forth from like fuego's day to peter's day i think that because they're at the beginning of the episode they're like so um we could only afford a budget to have one camera crew so we can't follow each of you through the day um so you guys are just gonna have to have your day together and it's them it's them trying to coexist through an entire day of like going to a dynamite taping or do it or do it yeah to like a dark taping or something and like they (laughs) it's like super odd couple-y where it's like they are forced to get a hotel room together (laughs) and take the same they're forced to like drive together eat at the same restaurant exactly go to the gym together um (laughs) and all that all right, that's okay, my whole. That's that great. Was my so whole we thing, get through. But. We get through. We get through all of those, right? And that helps uh, build that feud. But then I think there's got to be like one white whale that they still have to do. Like the thing that they have to capture that was the biggest prize of them being featured on TBS, which is like a guest star role on one of these shows. Um, let's just say it's like NCIS. So they get a guest star on this procedural where they are either like the prime suspect who's committed this crime or something like that. And they've been working through all of these things together, right? Because technically they both won, but it's been so destructive and that hasn't worked that then Tony and Cody sit them both down uh, in a dynamite and they're like, okay, it's been a disaster so far, guys. TBS and TNT they're really upset with how everything has, has gone because all you do <laughs> is fight and yeah. you've ruined your appearances. And I think it's done more negative publicity than positive for us. So for the actual appearance um, on a show, 
uh, on the network on a big network drama, only one of you is going to get it. And then they're both like <laughs> just so pissed. And pretty Peter Avalon is like, it should be me. Why isn't it me? I'm the one who's putting in effort. This guy doesn't even show his face. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like, how is he going to be a believable killer in NCIS if he won't even take off his mask? And then, yeah, and then Fuego no, yeah, is just Peter. like, this. Yeah, he's this guy sucks at acting. <laughs> no, you can, no, Peter can make the argument of like, what is he gonna be? Is he gonna be on TV with his mask? And like, like, what is he gonna be a killer luchador? Like, none of that makes sense. It's like, I'm the guy. I'm an actor. I'm, or he yeah, can exactly. instead of being like actor, he's like, I'm a, uh, 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 uh what the hell? An What's artist. the fancy? I, I'm the art. I'm an artist. Thespian. Artist. A, thespian. That's it. Yes. Th- thespian. Uh, look at me. Look at my face. I know who I am. I know my brand. You think people could resist looking at my face, especially as a guest star on NCIS? <laughs> um, <laughs> the ultimate prize, so, the guest star on NCIS. Yeah. <laughs> a, pol- a police procedural um, revolving around a fictional team of special agents from the Naval criminal investigative services combining you're literally reading the wiki right now procedural genres that's right (laughs) okay so all right so we so that's happening and now we now we know what they're working towards after this this hellish week of their uh appearances (laughs) this it's being so bad uh, and it's it's kind of building up on Twitter, like people are you know re- resharing it and posting it. And they're like, obviously this is a work, and you know it's leading to something else. And people are starting to realize that. But now we're we've drawn in other unassuming people into this, the real fans of TBS and the TBS programming, to uh, watch them <laughs> settle this. So it's like the guest. It started off in the TBS guest star battle royal, but now we have to figure out a way to get to a penultimate match where they decide um, who is going to be there's also got to be taking on that role. There's also got to be an episode of the go home sh- or the go big show. Um, the, the, the talent show that Cody and Snoop Dogg and Rosario Dawson are on. Um, mm. There's gotta be one with that where like all of a sudden, like uh, uh, Peter, Peter, pretty Peter Avalon comes out and Cody's like, Peter, what are you doing here? He's like, I'm 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 here to show you why I should be the face of TBS and I'm yeah. gonna display my talent. And he does like something really stupid. And then Fuego comes. I think out. he should try to sing an opera song. He yeah. like tries to sing an, an opera, a traditional opera song, and it's very or he bad. does like and or he does like a very <laughs> bad monologue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh and then Fuego comes in and is like, actually, this is not fair. I want to show my talents as well. And then maybe it's like juggling or just something like very lame. And they end up just brawling. Uh, or he does, or he, or he does like an like, actual talent hell? and is like very good at it. <laughs> yeah, maybe he plays the the saxophone or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, not, I don't know it, what it, Fuego Del Sol can do. But he but he does something very well, and then Peter gets mad, and then they fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so now we've we've gone through all these appearances where uh, on Conan they brawl. Uh, Peter gets in Conan's face, being like, "When are you going to introduce me? When we're supposed to come out uh, together, Conan? We're so, yeah, come on. Uh, no one cares about this guy." Um, <laughs> Then we yeah we get the the sitcom written appearance where they uh, are both like a waiter with like two lines and <laughs> you know they both try to do it better than each other. Uh, we get them on uh, a game show where they just fight, and now we have to build it up on dynamite. Of who should deserve this? Oh, if if so the like, game show on dark, the game show should be. Uh... I forget what the match game is, but if it was pyramid, it was the thousand dollar pyramid or whatever that game is where it's like you have to give hints to your partner where it's like like you're trying to make them say a word where it's like puppy and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. cute. Yeah, exactly. And it's like yeah. Peter and 
fuego like trying to give each other hints but they're just like horrible <laughs> hints. yeah exactly that's, <laughs> and then that's really where funny. peter and then peter gets bad and he's just like why would you say this for that <laughs> yeah exactly so that's that's great so yeah they they appear on uh yeah pyramid um they appear on the uh, conan go big show i don't know if i don't know if um uh if uh What's it called? Uh, uh, Price is Right is on TBS. But if it was and it was like a team episode and they're on the same team mm. and then Peter and then they're arguing and it's like Peter's like, oh, yeah, that lawnmower is uh, uh, four hundred dollars. And then Fuego's like, are you an idiot? <laughs> Why would that be four hundred dollars? <laughs> That would be good. I I don't know if it's on TBS, but we'll stick with Pyramid, Conan, Go Big Show. I love it. Um, I just want to see say, them. Let's try say, to like, coexist. Big Bang Theory was was still on, and they and they appear as a waiter character on the Big Bang Theory together, okay. and they end up brawling, and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> okay, but now we're the the big prize is that they get a guest star, uh, a featured role on the procedural NCIS. Um, <laughs> okay, so now in. In the wrestling world again, we have to uh, do some maybe uh, vignettes or competitions where they are each trying to prove their skills and marketability. So we get like a a competition uh, where they they both try to like cry on command, um, and <laughs> it's like. The, it's it's just like some random bit where they're backstage and it's like I I believe I can do it. It's like very heavily dramatic and pretty Pete Avalon is trying to cry on command and he's like <laughs> <laughs> and then the wingmen are like come on you can do it man you can do it and Sammy <laughs> Sammy is with uh, Fuego Del Sol and it's like I bet I can make Fuego cry on command and he like whispers something in his ear or something like that and I was like, why would you say that, Sammy? And he just starts crying all <laughs> through his mask. <laughs> and then everyone gets mad. It's like, oh, God damn it. Um, so then that's like, all right, amazing. Fuego is clearly a better actor um, than pretty Peter Avalon. And then maybe there's another thing where it's like, okay, uh, we're going to have a photo shoot. Um, yeah. And you, you are, you're each going to style... Uh, yourselves and we're going to see who has the best uh, fashion sense who's going to do the best in a photo shoot and they set it up like backstage and there's a photographer and uh, Fuego's doing well he maybe he's like wearing a suit he sees pretty Peter Avalon come in with like uh, a robe and like a uh, bunch of like feathers and jewelry and stuff but yeah, he like wearing, works really stupid wearing his and fantasies the pho- yeah the photographer is just like that or whatever that see-through shirt that JD Drake was wearing for a while before he like became like the Southern gentleman or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like a yeah, like a mesh uh, shirt. <laughs> and and the the photographer's like, "Are you sure about this?" And he's like, "Just take the picture." And, oh, I'm and then sure. Fuego's just, I'm sure. Fuego is just like laughing. Fuego and Sammy are just like you laughing at, me? At, at pretty Peter Avalon. He's like, "I can't do this. These people are distracting me. They're judging me." And then they can brawl again. <laughs> There also has to be a moment where like maybe someone like <laughs> someone from NC. I love how we're going with NCIS. Someone from NCIS sure. comes in as like a guest appearance on uh, Elevation or, or Dynamite or something. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, <laughs> to be like, yeah, no, I'm here. Uh, uh, it's great to be here. Um, you know, we're working towards this next season and, uh, I'm excited to be working with one of these guys. I've never met them, <laughs> but <laughs> I, th- I think it's funnier if it's like, okay, these, uh, they're promoting this new season of NCIS. They got one the lead actor or one of the leads come in, uh, and there's like a backstage segment where it's like, oh, uh, yeah, we're really excited to uh, have wrestling on TNT. And I was a big wrestling fan growing up. Uh, I, you know, I, I saw Chris Jericho wrestle and the big uh, Paul White. And 
the Rhodes family, you know, Dusty Rhodes was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. And it's really amazing to see this promotion. Uh, and then pretty Peter Avalon comes in with the script of the episode. Of oh, okay. NCIS. And he's like, hi, I want to introduce myself. I'm uh, Peter Avalon. Uh, I'll be working with you. Uh, I just had some questions about your lines. And he's like, trying to, uh, <laughs> he's trying to like coach this lead actor. He's like, actually, uh, if we could actually change this part so that you um, are actually maybe uh, if, if it's like, if it's like a female star, it's like you're actually in love with me because I'm so <laughs> handsome. Yeah. You're, you're interrogating me, but you're really distracted by my good looks. So I was wondering if you could maybe say this instead. And then she's like, um, I don't think so. And, and then boy goes like, excuse me, is this man bothering you? And then they start fighting again. Uh, and then Tony is, uh, I believe like Tony or Pro or Marvez is like back there and is just like, uh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, one of those two men, uh, as you know, will be a guest star on NCIS this season. Do you have any uh, words to say or uh, any encouragement for them? And she's just like, just stick to the lines. And then she leaves or no, something. I, it'd just be, it'd just, <laughs> it'd just be, it'd be really funny if it was like they fight and they move off or whatever and it turns back to them. And then, and then you look and go, I gotta work with one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it ends. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. So then basically we're getting towards like so the feud has gotten pretty crazy they're they're brawling they're doing uh different competitions to basically uh prove that they are better actors bigger stars i uh, i think we do one it, it's it's very like this energy is very kenny versus spenny uh and it's it's like pretty peter avalon versus fuego del sol and for uh the listeners uh in different parts of the world who don't know what kenny versus penny is i was literally about to say <laughs> a comedy show where these two uh comedians in canada um challenge themselves each episode to achieve a specific task uh to prove who is better at doing something like who yeah. can make the most money um who could who commit is, the most who could commit the most crimes <laughs> yeah yeah stuff like who that could, um uh who could stay uh tied to a goat the longest i think was another it's, one it's very ridiculous but essentially this is the energy that we are going with uh throughout the different episodes of dynamite and elevation and dark until maybe a rampage before a big pay-per-view where this is now where we decide who is going to be the guest star on NCIS because I think they have. There should also be a couple of matches. I don't know how long this feud is, <laughs> but there I should also be. They're going to be like, you, uh, it, two weeks ish. You, you could throw in at least a match or two of. Um, Fuego versus other people inside the uh, uh, wingmen. You'd have right. Fuego versus JD Drake. You have Fuego versus uh, uh, the Hollywood hunk Ryan Nemeth. Yes. You could have uh, him get absolutely destroyed by Cesar Benoni. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I think you maybe have an opportunity where it's like, okay. La pretty Peter Avalon is going to tag with Cesar Bononi uh, versus Sammy Guevara and Fuego. <laughs> and you're like, oh, great. Now these two little guys and pretty Peter Avalon uh, <laughs> and this giant man are in this wrestling match. Uh, but I think you get <sighs> another win for Fuego there. Yeah. And yeah, we're basically working up to it has to be a gimmick match. A uh, heavily gimmick match um, at Rampage because this is like okay, we have to see who can draw the most ratings um, with these guys, and also whoever comes out on top is going to get the guest star. It's very WWE, but if there was some way to have it so that you could live vote, yeah. But then, what's the point of the match? <laughs> 
<laughs> What's the point of the? Are they, is it is it just the match they are trying to like, like try to impress people in their match? So then there's a ton of times where like Peter like does a move to Fuego and then like turns to the hard camera or the audience and is like, vote for me. And like the wingmen have these like vote for Peter signs. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to like, think of like what it's like dancing with be, the stars right? put yeah. a wrestling match. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm trying to think like because if there was like a live voting element that would be fun. But there has to be like a winner of this match somehow. And I wonder what that could be. I think like maybe up like there, like before the match, there it's like everybody casts their votes. Uh, so the, like who is the fans' favorite? So then throughout the week leading up to that final match, like they are doing a bunch of things to like entertain the fans and try to get votes. Cause the I think you have to be. I think the fan favorite gives you a lot of power, maybe. Oh, here we go. All right. Throughout the week leading up to the match, it is announced via AEW social media that whomever gets the most votes uh, as a fan favorite or the TBS guest star gets an advantage in the match on Rampage that will decide who gets the the role, right? So I think it has to be like... um, (laughs) <laughs> but okay if so but then how does this tur- not turn into like fuego getting all the votes and basically just like beating up <laughs> peter avalon who has like n- who's like tied up or can't use weapons or something like that like how does this just not turn into like but the votes have been tabulated and uh, all the advantages go to Fuego del Sol. <laughs> it's a, I think it's a ladder. It's, it's, it's gotta be like a ladder match. And the, the, the thing that is the advantage is whomever gets the most votes doesn't have to wear the Cody Rhodes. Like it's like the, the training belt, but this one is weighted. So if it's a ladder match, that's obviously heavier and you have to wear it the entire match. Um, but there's got to be a way that in the match, Pete, pretty Peter Avalon can find a way to like cut it off and, or cheat so that then it becomes even again. So I, I don't know. That's that's so overbooked and complicated. <laughs> you know what this podcast is? I think I think what would just make more sense is is it's a it's a fan. It's a, a fan favorite match where these two are trying to put on the best match that they can and get your votes. And then like, like then they just fake it, like fake the voting and clearly Fuego wins, even if Peter like really won, but like, I don't think that he would win. And it's like Fuego wins the match. Fuego like wins all the votes. And yeah, I I think it's just all gimmicked in that way. Like it's not okay. an actual real yeah. like like voting thing. <laughs> I think they just bring it in like, hey, you can you can or maybe it's like in the middle of the match. There's things like uh, you can vote right now, like uh, but then they would turn it into like a 30 minute match or something where it's like it vote in now for your favorite. Whoever has the most votes right now gets to use a steel chair. And then like it goes up on the Titan, tr- like on the big screen and it's like Fuego has has like 30 percent more votes. And it's like now he can use a steel chair and he grabs and Pierre's like begging and stuff and he's getting yeah, to hit okay. him and All stuff. Right. OK, we just have to distill this down so that it makes a little bit of sense now. All right. The fan it's going to be a fan favorite. I think it should be a ladder match. Like I think they should be reaching for like uh a briefcase that is like their contract for the episode or whatnot. So I think, and then I really like this fan favorite voting element. Um, are you messaging me? No, 
I was just, oh. I just got a notification. <laughs> oh, I was like, I was like, are you messaging me telling me that I'm like cutting out or something? No, uh, no, no. Okay. All right. It's, is it? Okay. All right. All right. All right. I like this fan voting thing. And I, and I really, really like what you, what you just pitched where it's like they can, there's moments in this match where you can vote to give somebody an advantage. Like you, they can use a chair. Uh, they can use this or this happens or like uh, one of their friends can come help them. Like it's like a phone a friend or whatever. But I think there's like only two times you can vote. Um, that, and this, no, no, it's making it way more complicated than it needs to be. I don't even think it. Need, I honestly do not think it needs to be a ladder match. I think it's like this is a 30 minute match. No matter what, this is a 30 okay. minute match. No okay. matter what, every five, 10 minutes, whatever. There's a chance for the audience to vote to give one of these guys an advantage. And it will show up on the screen saying, like, who do you okay. want to be able to use a steel chair? Who do you want yeah. to be able to who has to uh, who has to get handcuffed? Like stuff like that. And so then it's either going to be really funny because it's all going to go against Peter or they fake yeah. it and they give one to Fuego, one to Peter and then one to Fuego and Fuego wins. Everything else is way too. <laughs> I know you love to. I know you love to go. All right. So then this is a rule, and then this is a rule, and then on top of that rule is this rule. But there's a sub rule. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But what I'm saying is, I think it. I I'm gonna have to strongly disagree with you here because the the ladder match thing is not too complicated because if there's already voting for advantages. I think the handcuff has to come. I think there's only three times that they can vote. It's a third. It's, it's going to be a 30 minute, like time limit match, but it's, they just like, there's no pin here. I don't, I don't want this to just be a traditional pin or submission match. They literally have to secure this contract. That's my, that's my thinking it is literally like you literally just have to grab the contract. Yeah. But well, no, a ladder, the match, a ladder match is fine. It's then like what it is, what, what I'm, having trouble with is like a ladder match is fine but then like what what it is is there's <laughs> there's so much on top of each other of like okay so it's a ladder match and then through this match you only have two times where you can vote at home to do this so make sure your vote counts specifically it's like i not just have them vote whenever also how it's more of the logistics where I'm like, how would you be able to make sure that they only can do this? What, how are they going to be able to do this? Like, <laughs> well, it's the exact same. It's the exact same thing that you were pitching with the every five minutes. Like it's a, it's a 30 minute match. That's the time limit period. Well, and at the beginning of the match, you can vote for, a advantage so and then in the middle of the match you can vote for one so that's at the end of the 30 minutes if neither of them climb the ladder and grab it neither of them get it correct okay okay at least we established yeah. that <laughs> yeah see at least okay. we established you're that. coming around to this now so um to build in a fail safe for the real ncis that probably does not want a wrestler as a guest star, um, even though we are going to make somebody win because it is a fictional book at this universe. And of course we want somebody to pretend, get a starring role on a TV show. Um, yeah. It's the lighter match. If nobody gets it at the end of 30 minutes, then the opportunity goes away. Boom. It was all, <laughs> it was all worth nothing in the end. If anything, if anything here is being here ridiculous. Is here is the Justin Roberts explanation of explaining the match before it happens. This is okay. the, this is the face of TBS uh, ladder match. If yes. uh, during this match, you will be able to vote at home on advantages to give one of the wrestlers. If Correct. neither men are able to collect the contract from atop the ladder, then neither will win the opportunity. That's all. That's all it is. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> just to make we it just easier. have to figure out the nitty gritty of it. 
but <laughs> essentially so there's going to be two. I think there's going to be two advantages. There's going to be the steel chair and the handcuffs. That's it. Handcuffs is a good one. The, and the handcuffs, the handcuffs is going to come like at the most pivotal point of the match, which will be like the last five minutes. I don't think I a think. steel, I don't, maybe something else instead of a steel chair. Cause you think about it. It's like, uh, I mean, if they're, if it's a ladder match then they can just throw ladders at each other. <laughs> Who cares about a chair? It has to be something like that. It has to be like the the handcuffs is great because you'd have Peter handcuff Fuego to the to the ladder and the or to the ropes and he can't climb right. the ladder. Um, hmm. It has to be something like that where it's like in something like an impede it impedes them or like um, oh, a good? blindfold. That would, be good. that would be funny. That'd be funny. Yeah. The other person gets blindfolded. Uh, so they have to, uh, yeah. The, <laughs> and it's like a, a very sexy, like velvet, uh, like pretty Peter Avalon. Um, you know, it's it's a velvet mask. It's like a very sexy mask, like uh blindfold. <laughs> and, do you remember? Um, do you remember what was it? What match was it? Oh, it was the You Can't See Me match. Where it was John Cena versus I don't remember who. But it but it was the match where they were both blindfolded. Like I do had, not remember it, this. It was, <laughs> it was it was John Cena versus I forget who, but they both had bags over their heads and so they couldn't see each other. So they're both fighting, trying to figure out where each other is and fight each other. I can't this is remember. Ridiculous. I can't remember who el- who is the <laughs> opponent. For some reason, I want to think it was Umaga, but I don't think it was. Um, mm. But yeah, it's like that. It's where it's then where like Peter's like. Peter loses. He's like, no, 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 no. And then like Sammy like forces like a bag over his head or like blindfolds him. Yeah. And, and Peter just like has to feel around the ring. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think one of the wingmen ha- cut holes like eye holes. OK. Yeah. Into it so that he can see. Um, And I, I think like that will have to that that like basically happens immediately. Um. It, after, well, I mean, there's like no, you got some moments few, where he's feeling around the ring. We yeah, get some comedy spots in. Yeah, Fuego hits him with the DDT, and then his head is like maybe just hanging out of the ring, and like Nick Nemeth like maybe comes in and like cuts two like huge eye shaped holes so that yeah. pretty Peter Avalon can see. So he's like wearing a bag on his head, and there's these like two giant holes, and he's like trying to wrestle with them. And then we're gonna kayfabe the second vote. Yeah, because if Peter if if pretty Peter Avalon loses both votes, it's like so unfair. And we all know wrestling's fake, of course. Uh, so we can, we we gimmick it so that Fuego gets handcuffed. And <laughs> this is where both people now have disadvantages, even though pretty Peter Avalon can see now. But Fuego is handcuffed to the rope, so he cannot reach the ladder. Let's go home. How think, do we finish this match? I think, and who I think, wins? I think in that spot, though, too, it's like they see like it's like. Maybe or actually, honestly, maybe what happens is Peter also gets the handcuffs and then Bryce Rensberg or someone takes out the handcuffs and is trying to put them on Peter. And then the wingmen grab them and they handcuff Fuego. And then, oh. and then, like, and then, like, say they steal the key. And earlier in the match, like, they take out Sammy or something. And then Sammy comes back and fights off the wingman, grabs the key, and unlocks Fuego. So then Fuego can go and and do it. I think that's like more of a a fun like face way of doing it. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Okay. So here we go. We're in this ladder match. First vote has gone by. Pretty Peter Avalon has to put a bag on his head. So he can't see anything. And Fuego could easily just run up the ladder and grab the briefcase. Oh, well, but maybe it's... pretty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all. And it's a joke anyway. So uh, so then he's maybe this is how 
the bag ends up being an advantage is Fuego's climbing up the ladder to try to reach a briefcase and pretty Peter Avalon is stumbling around the ring and he bumps into the ladder as Fuego is going up and he yep. falls. Yep, exactly. Uh, and then Fuego is like, what the hell? He goes and just starts wailing on pretty Peter Avalon. Pretty Peter Avalon hits a tornado DDT. Then he's basically knocked out. His head drapes outside the ring. One of the wingmen takes the scissors, cuts eye holes, and then boom, they're back in it. Uh, the advantage uh, is nullified. Uh, we get some, you know, fun wrestling. Uh, the Martinis get hit on Fuego del Sol. Uh, but <laughs> that's as his finisher. The Martinis, yeah. I didn't even know that. That's amazing. <laughs> but as um, our guy, PPA, goes to climb up the ladder, the second vote hits. And that is the handcuff vote. And of course, because my guy, uh, Fuego is the face, we don't have to gimmick it. We assume that Fuego will win the vote. And then Bryce Remsburg <laughs> pulls out a pair of handcuffs and he's getting ready to handcuff pre Pierre Avalon. And as you said, the wingmen, those those dastardly handsome bastards they knock out <laughs> remsburg they take the key and the handcuffs they handcuff fuego and they're like go on go on peter go you can't do it you can't do it and he's slowly climbing up the ladder he's uh he's really like just soaking it in he's, yes he's yeah, taunting yeah, yeah. That'd and he's be good. basking in the glory and then sammy who has not been ringside Let's say he has not been ringside yet. He runs down to save his friend Fuego del Sol. And he beats up all the guys, grabs the key, as you said, unlocks Fuego, pushes over the ladder. And then he's like, I'm going to like let you do this. No, 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 no. He he uh, PPA is at the top of the ladder. Instead of grabbing the thing, he's looking down. He's shocked. He's like, no, no. And then he like and then and then is when um, when Sammy's unlocking Fuego, Peter tries to climb up and he's like fumbling with it. He's like, uh, uh, uh like he's really struggling <laughs> with trying to get it out. And then and then that's where uh, I think that uh, Fuego climbs to the top. They exchange punches and then he gives a tornado DDT off of the ladder. Oh, yeah, that's it. I don't of know course. how you do it, but. He just like headlocks them and swings them into like know. yeah, but but anyways, he I don't does. Know. But that's the spot. That's that's the spot of the match. Is yeah, he's fumbling around. He th- we think he's almost got it. Sammy unlocks the handcuffs and Wego sprints up. Boom, 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 boom. They're hitting. That's where oh, you have oh, Taz. My God, what? <laughs> that's where yeah. you have Taz on commentary, just being like, just grab it, God damn it, Peter. <laughs> Peter, yeah. grab yeah. it Peter. already. <laughs> just got it. Yeah, and then Tornado DDT (laughs) off the top. Boom. Oh, my God. They're both they're both messed. And you know what is the most dramatic part of that? After the spot, we look up at the big clock that's on the Titan Tron and it reads like twenty eight fifty three or something. And it's just ticking. It's like and then there's like there's like one minute left. And you're like, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sammy Are helps, any of these guys going to get it? Yeah. Sammy helps Fuego up. He slowly climbs the ladder and then at the last yeah. possible second grabs it. Exactly. He looks at he looks right back at the clock. It's like three, two. And then he rips it and then he raises up the briefcase. And instead of his theme playing, <laughs> it's the opening theme to NCIS. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. <laughs> and that's the end of rampage the rampage episode that is the end of pretty peter avalon's uh potential uh guest star in ncis and fuego del sol some way somehow will now appear on ncis as the prime suspect in uh, a crime uh, but it's his featured role he is now the face of tbs and uh, what if he was just like what if he was just like an unnamed uh 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 body 
What if he was just like an I like a like a like the person that gets killed at the beginning of the episode? Yeah, because nobody really knows, right? Like what the involvement is. It's just like he's going to be on NCIS and it would be really funny if and he's just and then was, he's just like the cadaver that's like sit, well not the cadaver he's yeah, just he's just he's just the just body the that's body. sitting yeah, on the operating the table with his mask yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then it's this thing of like he is Fuego's really happy about it and he's like I was on I was on TV like I was on TV and then Peter just has this like that should have been me <laughs> yeah or he or he we go. or or Peter even has this thing of like that was it. <laughs> yeah, that he's was, like, what? That was it? <laughs> what? What? All we're that? fighting for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, before he goes just like, oh, that was awesome. And Sammy's like, great job, man. You were you were so still. I really believe you were dead. And <laughs> I pretty Peter Avalon is just like, oh, oh. You I'm that. glad you won. Yeah, I'm yes. glad you won. It would have been a waste of oh. my time. <laughs> there you go. That's hilarious. That's I love it. I love <laughs> it so much. I That's just love the, the idea of like, shit. I love the idea of like these two like going from show to show and just like ruining the shows and like continuing their feud like outside of the wrestling ring and everything. And everybody's like, who are these two? <laughs> yeah like who are these guys and what are they doing yeah um i love it oh my i love it what a time well there we go that was our booking of fuego del sol versus pretty peter avalon to become the face of tbs <laughs> face of tbs oh lord I love it. All right. Well, let us know online or in your review of the podcast or via Twitter. Um, what kind of feud would you want to see between uh, pure, pretty pure Avalon and Fuego del Sol or other interesting feuds that you'd like to see appear on Dark or Elevation with uh, some of our favorite up and comers? Um, to close out the episode, as always, we do a question of the week and a match recommendation uh as always if you want to leave us questions you can do so either by tweeting at us or sending them in um online in the comments of the video or on a review or of course directly to us on our website unknown slash book events there's a there's a little spot there for you to to submit your questions and also that's where you can find all the episodes and all the match recommendations that we give every episode um this week's episode or this week's question uh was kind of racking my brain trying to think of like a question that kind of relates to sort of all of this stuff Uh, and then the only thing that i could come up with (laughs) the only thing i could come up with (laughs) was what's what's your favorite (laughs) what's your favorite acting role from a wrestler Mm. like or 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 who what wrestler would you like to see go and act in like a movie or a tv show (laughs) okay (laughs) easy easy john cena the suicide squad or uh john cena in um train wreck is that what that movie is called when, with I, Amy when, Schumer? I, when i was thinking of this question i'm i wanted to be like caveat you can't pick the rock or john cena <laughs> damn okay well in that case that makes this a lot harder um i would have to say because obviously cena is mm. awesome and so is the rock hmm they're basically that is really stars difficult. now Okay. I th- well, I thought you would immediately just go for for fucking uh uh money plane. <laughs> yeah, I could. It's too easy. Adam Copeland and money plane. Uh, no, I I'm thinking. Okay, I'll go with a uh, a bit more recent one. Um, because I missed seeing him on TV, and this was getting ready for his return to wrestling. Uh, CM Punk in the Stars original drama Heels was pretty entertaining he played like this like weird wrestler man who was like kind of like a hillbilly redneck type 
thing, but also like a weird kind of like barbarian. Maybe uh, he had this like drone with a possum on it, that, like shot blood. Very funny. Very awesome. CM Punk, but also John Cena. Come on, man. John Cena is so good in everything that he does. Oh, yeah. Um, no, Cena's he's my great. favorite comedic. He's a favorite comedic actor. He's so <laughs> John good. Cena. He is. He is. Re- he has great comedic timing and he's he, he knows exactly what his thing is and to put himself in like certain things to have that juxtaposition yeah. of like him being a giant buff dude and then either the is commitment. really yeah the commitment yeah. Sort of, yeah that that's the that's the word i think that can really describe all of john cena's roles in movies is the commitment and the effort that he puts in no matter how silly the story or the character for example uh the comedy what's it called cock blockers where basically they him and a bunch of parents find out that their teenage uh kids on prom night are planning to hook up so that they so they go and try to stop it all from happening and he like butt chugs a beer and it is like so funny yeah Uh, he is so great and uh we love john cena um (laughs) marty what is yours do you have one you can't go with Edge on Money Plane now because you spoke um, that. <laughs> my funny one was I was going to say The Rock in The Tooth Fairy. Um, Good. Uh, another one is Triple H in Blade. Was it Blade or was oh. it? Oh. Um, yeah, it's Blade, right? It's, yeah, he's a, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. A vampire, he's a vampire Wolverine thing. I don't know. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, really mediocre performance um, incredibly mediocre um uh the million times that the miz played the marine um yep no they're great <laughs> very good all my answers are just joke <laughs> answer <laughs> <laughs> because we know the real answers are the rock and john cena and i think somebody who would be good um, would probably be uh chucky t and trent uh as a duo doing something on television together that would be very nice if they're in an episode of like it's always sunny or something that'd be funny yeah that would um be good. what is it i was trying to think of who i think would be a really great actor i mean becky lynch has been getting more into act- she was in she was in one of the marines um and she's like there's that animated movie about like monsters wrestling or whatever um coming out and like a bunch of wrestlers are doing voice acting voice acting in that like Roman Reigns is in it Becky Lynch is doing a voice in it so wow yeah Becky Lynch let's go with that nice the um, man and to close out the episode oh yeah let us know online please uh who is your favorite acting moment by a wrestler or what mm. wrestler do you want to see act yeah closing out with our match recommendation of the week this week is, is my recommendation um to be honest i didn't have one now i'm just gonna I come think, up with one i'm gonna come up I with one you off the pick- top of my head I think you should pick the uh, the match uh, between Fuego del Sol and Miro. That's a good one. I like that one. Honestly, you know what? I'm going to go with what well, we'll go watch that one, please. Because um, Fuego's great. I'm going to go with. Um, I could also say the culmination of Brian or Brian Cutler. <laughs> Brandon Cutler versus Pretty Peter Avalon. Oh, where, that's where, also good. Where uh, <laughs> Cutler like poured a bunch of D and D dice out and and threw Peter onto it, and Peter is legit said like they hurt more than anything else. <laughs> like they hurt more <laughs> than thumbtacks. <laughs> that's um, so funny. But the one that I am one hundred percent going to tell people go watch because it was an incredible match. If you can find it online. Actually, no, you can't find it online because it was friggin' free on YouTube. Brian Danielson versus Minoru Suzuki. Because mm. in the match, Taz straight up says, if you are not watching this, you are an idiot. 
<laughs> if you're watching anything else on TV and you're not watching this, what are you doing? <laughs> I know that was just a straight up like call out to like the fact they are competing with SmackDown, but it was such a good match. It's free. It's on YouTube. Just watch it because it's just watch it. 20 minutes of madness. And I love it. <laughs> nice. That's good. So there we go. That's good. Um, yeah, cool. So that'll do it for this episode. As always, if you want to follow anything that we do here at Unknown Error, our Twitch streams, um, our the rest of the stuff that we do on YouTube gameplay wise or other content, you can do so by following us at UE underscore films. You can, of course, follow myself on Twitter and Instagram where I rarely post anything because I'm too busy posting stuff for Book of Vince and Unknown Air at Bart underscore minute. You can follow Mr. Anthony Hall. At Hall and Jokes on Instagram and Twitter. And you can follow the podcast everywhere at Book of Vince Pod. That does it for this week. That was a fun one, Anthony. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for listening and or watching. Go watch some wrestling. Have a good one and we'll catch you next time. I don't know. I don't know what to do at the end of the too sweet. ASMR. Too sweet. Too sweet. Too sweet.